Okay. Let me find. It's so funny because uh, when it, I think she's, I think it's live. Is it live? I'm checking yeah. on my phone now. Too. I, yeah, it says, it says right there. It's so yeah. funny. And then it'll be like, oh, yeah, we're live. And then we'll all be like, well, hey, everybody. It's like they've all watched for the past three minutes. They, they know we're here. Hilarious. All right, let me get in there on my <gasps> mobile device so that I can <laughs> watch the chat. Have a all right, there we go. Okay, yeah, I see it. Beautiful. Okay, hey, Allison, great to see you. Welcome, everyone. Great to have you all here. Thanks for joining. Um, I'm going to go ahead and run the introduction and we'll just jump, we'll dive literally right in. <laughs> My name is Kay Moon. And as you probably know, if you're, if you've been on this channel, I am a uh, Western astrologer and twin soul channel here. And today we are joined by special guests, Lee and Sherry Patterson of Relationship Reinvented. They are connection coaches and specialize in helping people remove the blocks to connection that they have when it comes to love, connection with self, source, and others. These two have been working together for, I would say, you've been doing this for over 10 years. Is that correct? Well over yeah. 10. Yeah, and not, not only 15. Close to 15. Started 15. Yeah, I guess, I guess the way you really look at it, it is. We started off connected, disconnected, connected, disconnected. Yeah, so we really kind of learned a lot. Beautiful. Yeah. So these two have been working together on this twins as twins in union um, for almost two decades at this point. Mm. And their work together um, it has moved from beyond just coaching one on one individuals into coaching training coaches who would like to help others deepen their connection again with self source love and others around them. So if you're just joining us, feel free to give this video a like, hit that thumbs up button. It helps the content get circulated. And um, we'll have a little special portion at the end for Q and A from the audience. But today, we're going to start off with live coaching from two beautiful, brave souls. We've got Kate and Claire here. <laughs> Give us a wave, ladies. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Kate and Claire um, are members of my private list and members of the private list were emailed prior to this live laser coaching session and invited to sign up to do the live laser coaching for free as an opportunity to just heal their own blocks as well as start to understand, you know, what the next step is. They were specifically chosen among dozens because much of what they had shared were things that really resonated with you know, the collective. So even though you may not be getting live coached at this moment and you're listening, listen for the ways that what they're sharing is a reflection of your own experiences, because what Lee and Sherry coach them around will also be healing for you. If you'd like to follow up with Lee and Sherry, you're more than welcome to do so in a moment. I'll be posting links to both their YouTube channel and their email so that you can email them directly to set up a complimentary life coaching session, as well as their uh, website. So you can check out more about what they do there. And for those of you who are finding that your light work specializes in the arena of helping other people in the space of loving connection, you will find their connection coaching program, one of the best bar none all around. Lee and Sherry, thank you for being here with us today. Well, thank, thank you, you for having us. Yeah. Thank you so much. A hell of an introduction. Thank you yeah. very much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You guys are welcome. It's my pleasure. Okay. So um, we need a volunteer. Kate, oh, Claire, no. who would like to go first? <laughs> Kate, can I put you on the spot for going first? Oh, yeah. Hey, okay. awesome. Kate, welcome. Kate Thank drew you. the short straw. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm saying yes to whatever comes my way. This is my year oh, of yes. All right. I love that. 
That's good. I love it too. So Kate shared when I asked for a brief overview of her twin connection, she, and what she'd like help with today. She said she connected with her twin shortly before she went away for treatment for alcohol and depression. They picked back up a week into treatment where they had a long distance love affair for three months. They're in separation now. They've had some communication. Two weeks ago, she says, I was triggered when he texted me and I got very angry, fearful. I was going to get hurt again as he is not yet divorced. So I picked a fight. I pushed him away and I told him I released him. She says, what I'd like help with today is abandonment issues, attachment issues, and perfectionism so that I can be more vulnerable and less guarded. So Kate, um, how long ago did you start drinking? Um, I've always been a drinker. I have it on both sides of my family. and. Okay. And, um, yeah, it's, it's in my oh. DNA, but, um, six years ago I had my third child okay. and I had, he, I have two girls and I, my third child is a boy and I had a very big postpartum with him. And then my father died the day that he was christened and so that, and my marriage was a wreck. So within about the span of two years, the baby, my father died, and I got divorced and went to treatment. So the drinking really came on when I was depressed. I was self-medicating. Yeah. And Staying home with the kids. Out. So how did you heal yourself through the loss of your father? Uh, Do you feel this? Do you feel your head? So why, yeah. would you trust, why would you trust connection if that's still there? And the girl inside who lost her father, when have you ever sat with how she feels? Well, that's why I went back to treatment uh, last year to, to the first time I went, I've been twice. The first time was to address the drinking. The second time was to address the depression of my, my father um, because I knew that I had not gotten to that, <clears throat> that of depression. You know, I had gotten, I had treated the, the, immediate alcoholism and, you know, coming back to function as a mother, but I hadn't gotten to, to the grief yet of my father and the divorce, you know, I never I hadn't really grieved the divorce. So, okay. um, okay. <laughs> as many times as your head shook, no, we're not accessing what you actually feel. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, so what, what you're doing when you're moving back and forth, right? It's dignif It's really showing how you can be connected to yourself, but it's going to be uncomfortable for you. Mm -hmm. You're abandoning that, which is going to make sure that your twin abandons you, isn't it? Yeah. The deeper you get inside of the truth, the more the truth is going to reveal what's happened. So as you're sitting here really trying to explain it, there was a lot of uncomfortableness. When have you ever let anybody connect directly to how you feel? When has that ever happened? Um, it's okay. We're going to do that here. You're not going to have to worry about ever not doing that again. Because I, I mean, can I think, feel. I think in treatment, I connected with a lot of the the healers and therapists. But um, <laughs> your head. <laughs> that's okay. Let me tell you why that's important. Okay. Okay. See. With this connection, there's so many different things that have happened, right? Um, when you see twin flame, for example, and you go and you research it, you're going to find labeling, labeling, experiences, experiences, se separation, 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 all of this stuff, right? But the one thing you're not going to find is that the twin flame is an experience. It's an experience you're already having with yourself. It's just amplifying it. So you can see how you abandon, reject, or betray yourself. The more defensive the mind becomes, the more disconnected you become. And you probably had to numb yourself from that, which would make sense with the alcohol use. But you inherited that from the two people you're connected from. So here comes this magical connection and all of that gets amplified. And even the loss that you haven't let yourself feel, the connection you know you want, but you won't let yourself have, 
because you reject how you feel. And you've probably been doing that since early childhood, right? Mm -hmm. And when you learned how to reject how you feel, who was allowed to love you? Mom, dad? Were they allowed to love you when you were rejecting how you feel? Um, to an extent. So this is what you're replaying again in your connection. And the girl who does, the girl who feels everything, how are you staying connected to her and saying no more running? Um, Do you feel it? Do you feel it? <laughs> okay, I'm, I want to sit with her for a minute because I have a question for her. Okay. Who's allowed to love you? Who's really allowed to love the real you? And why are you pushing it away? I guess I'm, Don't forget to breathe. <laughs> I guess I'm scared of people seeing the real me. You know, I grew up having to be perfect because my brother. Oh, right there. Let's stop right there for a minute. Okay. Which parent looked you in the eyes and said, you have to be perfect or you'll lose my love? None of them. Yeah, no, right. Them. But why did you have to be perfect? And what did that do to everything you feel when you told yourself that? It kept the peace when it was a misfit. Being, per being perfect kept the peace. <laughs> no, that's not it. See, on the inside, you were able to disconnect from how you feel. And everyone around you needed you to show up a certain way, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They told you how they wanted you to show up. And when they did that, were they loving the real you anymore? No. And how do it you feel about And the girl that this happened to was in there. How are you connected to her? Am I connected I mean, to her? Are you connected to her? Well, yeah, she's a part of me. Do you feel your head shaking? No, it doesn't matter if you try to. Let me tell you why this is interesting, right? Uh, <clears throat> one of the things that happened to me that Cherry used to point out to me when we would talk, because she would pay attention to every word I said. So people wonder why I do that. But literally, Sherry did that to me in this connection because she was trying to figure out how come she could feel the inside of me and how come I could feel the inside of her. And I wasn't telling her. So she started paying attention to my body language and the words I was choosing. And every time I was saying no, my head was doing this. And she goes, when did this become no? <laughs> my awakening that hit me after she said that, oh, the pain was just absolutely ridiculous because I went, how many times am I doing that? And if you ever notice when you say no, your head shakes side to side. We are all children in here. And one of the very first things you learned was yes and no. And the truth always got you loved when you used that. Are you hungry? And then somebody would come feed you. Do you want to take a nap? Then they might play with you. All of that is still in you, right? Mm -hmm. But the you that's connected to her, when you're answering these questions, she's showing the disconnect. Hmm. Because she is innocent and vulnerable. Would you ever let yourself have this connection if you're disconnected from her? Breathe, Kate. Breathe. Yeah. You feel it? That's her. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask her a question. How do you get to come out and show this to your twin? How do you get to come out and show this to your children? How do they get access to her? Or do you have to put a mask on her and make her perfect? I don't think I have to be perfect in front of my children, but I've got a lot of... Um, I have bending to do for them. So I'll probably overcompensate and probably wear a mask a little bit to, you know, more of a, I'm trying to be more authentic and playful and present for them. 
Yeah. And what oh. happens is, is when you got wounded from your parents without their knowing and told yourself you had to be perfect, you now have a connection to your children that still consists of that. So it gets passed down to them. This is mm -hmm. what this connection is here to heal in so many different ways. We lost our connection to everything we feel because when did anybody sit down and say, you know what, how you feel matters. And I want to connect to that. We don't even hear that. That's not even a thing on this planet, mm -mm. but here, this connection is making you feel that way and you have to shut it down and disconnect from it. That's not fair. Not to you, not to your children, not to your twin, nobody. And if nobody sat down with how you feel, how are you ever going to trust how you feel? I don't. Yeah. I mean, I, I was trained to not really be vulnerable to show all that. Um, in fact, when, when I got married, I basically married a version of my father. Mm. And I, he was, he's 10 year, almost 10 years older than I am. I feel like he kind of raised me in a parental figure for me. And I never could really show my true self even to him. So I don't know how to, okay. I don't know how to, how to, how to do that. Well, let's ask you some <laughs> questions to see if that's the truth. Okay. Can you receive love without vulnerability? Can I personally or in general, like you in general? You with your, with your vulnerability, if you don't have a connection to it, can you receive love? No. How can you how can you give love if you're disconnected from your vulnerability? It's you feel, it's not, you feel it's it? not, yeah, it's not no, that's not right. And vulnerability is the same thing as intimacy. It's the same thing as your innocence. But our vulnerability takes a beating when we get into this world, not because of us, but because of the thought patterns we have to learn, the ways of thinking we have to learn the way we explain things to ourselves. When somebody wants to love the real you, that vulnerability is your choice on how you're gonna show up for it. And if you don't show up vulnerable, aren't you just rejecting their love? Mm -hmm. I feel like the few times that I have been vulnerable, I've been deemed felt, too, too much something, too much this, too much it? that. Feeling it? She doesn't agree with anything you're saying. Ah. So here, here's a good question. What is vulnerability to you? Mm. Isn't that interesting? That's why she yeah. was this. That's why she was doing this. She was doing this because her vulnerability is hers. Your connection to her and how you open her up, how you keep your heart open, no matter what happens is your ability to be loved. And the moment you got hurt and you closed it down, what happened to the hurt? It's just containment. There's no healing involved. But if you opened up and allowed your hurt out and allowed somebody to connect to it, how long would you stay hurt? Not as long. <laughs> Did you notice you said not as long? <laughs> she agreed. Mm -hmm. And you're doing that here. Everybody who's watching this, okay, Moon, even Claire, we're sitting here and watching this and we're watching you accept the healing because you're wide open. There's no judgment here. There's never needs to be any judgment when you're hurt. But when we're hurt, guess what we're doing? We're judging the shit out of ourselves. Why would you let somebody be connected to you if you're doing that to you? And especially when your mind wants to defend your need to stay hurt and tell you, you don't need your vulnerability. Where in fact, your vulnerability is the only way you're gonna heal. Can you have connection without vulnerability? I don't think authentic, uh, true. Do you feel the answer? No. Right. See, the mind always wants to get involved in this connection. And we just stay doing what we're doing because there's too many minds that need to be released. So how you feel can show up. So you know that you can be connected to it. We've made it our mission because there's just too much false. The false is everything you think. 
And it's doing that against everything you feel. I accept everything you feel, Kate. So does Claire, so does Kate Moon, so does everybody watching. And if they can feel you, so can he. So why not just be open and let him in? Well, I think I had such a hard time. Obviously this journey, it's crazy. Um, you know, question it all the time, what's real, what's not real, am I making it up? But especially when I was away in treatment, you know, it made me think, was any of it real? And then you get back into the real world of being, you know, I had to come back and be a single mom during COVID. That was when COVID hit last year. I had to come back and put on my, my armor and be super mom, sober super mom. And then I had this other lingering connection going on and it just, it, it just made me question everything. So, you know, when he denies, he says that we had a connection, but, um, not to the extent I experienced, you know, that, that's his side. So it just, I think that's why I put my guard up to, mm. to not show my cards, you know. Let's, let's really get to the truth of why you put your guard up. Are you ready to heal that now? Mm -hmm. What does connection know about time? It doesn't. So every time you bring up the past and you bring up everything that's already happened, are you connected or disconnected from the connection? Uh, disconnected. Yeah. And this is what you're choosing. Yeah. Because right now in this moment, if I said, hey, can you feel your heartbeat if you put your right hand over it right now and feel it? Go ahead. And then you feel it going through your hands, going through you, and you ask the question of your mind, what's my next thought gonna be? What does your mind tell you? I'm sorry, what's your next thought gonna be? Say it out loud. What's my next thought gonna be? <laughs> what, show, what shows up? Oh, isn't that interesting? You stopped your mind because you stopped time and you connected to yourself and that's the only place he can meet you. Why aren't you just staying in that? It's interesting, Kate. We've had, we're, we're doing this spiritual retreat home here. And everybody who's walked into this energy field goes, what the hell is this? I'm like, this is connection. Time doesn't exist here. Time is the issue. You can't physically touch time. You can't physically, you can tell yourself a story about it and make yourself suffer and you'll blame them for that. But you're not catching the mind that's doing it to you and that takes no blame at all. The girl in you that feels everything, if you don't have a connection to her, the girl in the head is just running over. And you're teaching everybody around you to do that. What happens when you just stay with the girl that feels everything? Isn't that who you really want him to connect to? Mm-hmm. Then well, you, it goes you first. <laughs> and right now, uh, what's your next thought going to be? Isn't that interesting? <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? It's like, it's, it's right? It's like, wait, I got to bring up some shit in the past to make sure that I stay disconnected and you help me validate that. I'm not going to. Because right now I feel Kate and Kate is an incredible woman. Vulnerable. And that vulnerability is keeping her sober and loving her kids. That's strong. Not the other bullshit. The other's just a story. And who you have to identify in that story is what your mind's doing to you, not what you're doing to your mind. Because every time you ask your mind what your next thought's gonna be, that's how you happen to your mind. And your mind doesn't happen to you. Hmm. That would be connection, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Then love her, Kate. She's the key to your healing. She I'm wants trying. <laughs> you see, that's that trying word. There's the mind. Oh, I want to yeah. try. No, no, you're not trying. Trying is future. It's time. You're back in your disconnect. That's how simple it happens. Get away from trying. Get into feeling. Can you imagine a whole world full of people who do nothing but feel each other? How violent do you think this world would be? Or how amazing would this world be? It'd be amazing. 
And mm. before we had technology and before we had all of the shit that we've done to our planet, we would feel each other from across the other side and find each other. And we act like we don't want that again. We've got easier means and we're making it into a shit show. You can feel it. <laughs> Perfect timing. Perfect timing. <laughs> <In a trial. laughs> this is a child looking for his sister and he's using his voice, but he's using his energy at the same time. And it's beautiful. If you really pay attention, if you just opened your heart and said, I want him to feel me, I bet you he'd text you if you really focused on it and you didn't have to use time to do it. It's okay. How are you connected to you right now? I'm trying to, I, I am focusing on my heart. <laughs> I'm not trying to. I it's am hard to get out of this damn thing, isn't it? <laughs> well, it is. I, I am, I've, I, I've had some energy healing before and I am very heady with my energy up here and I'm trying to really move it hard. I've done tons of heart openings and that's, that's where I am. That's, that's, um, but it's practice. I have to be mindful to say, no, get out of my head and move down to my heart. And, well, um, can I give you something to practice? Sure. please. And then we'll have to stop. Yes, yes. This will be, um, our transition thank, point. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kay. Mm -hmm. um, you know that this is the, the present moment where you were asking your mind what your next thought going to be, right? Stay in that. The more you stay in that, the more you'll realize you really don't have a reason to have your heart closed. You're ready to heal. You're not going to heal if you're in your head. Because when did thinking ever lead to healing? Not often. When Oh, so we're going with not often, not never. So there's yeah. still an open door there for thinking to show up and wreck you. The truth is, there's never been a thought that connected to how you feel because nobody's teaching. It. Doesn't mean it's not possible. It's just not something we as human beings have learned to connect through. We want to interact mind versus mind. Notice I said versus. But heart to heart doesn't mean a versus, does it? Mm-mm. So everything you feel matters, Kate. And that's how you'll start showing yourself that you're thinking when it traps you in time, it's just trying to take up old wounds, bury old wounds, keep you disconnected from how you feel. Why would you ever let him love you if you keep practicing that? You wouldn't. No. And he deserves you when you are loving yourself to the fullest. And you're not going to do that if you're in your head. We can have our dreams. We just got to get out of our way of our head, which is our greatest disconnect. Mm -hmm. Because this rejects everything you feel. And guess what you're teaching them how to do when your head gets to do that? And yeah, then you, lo logic, uh, logic messes up everything, you know, and that's what we're... <clears throat> do is be logical beings and um you know when he says leave me alone i just want peace logically i'm like okay i've overstepped my boundaries he thinks i'm well, crazy <laughs> may i make a suggestion when he does that here's what you say you say you know what logic he needs greater intelligence and i can't go to you for that because greater intelligence is in your heart in your silent space and connection to how you feel you open up the portal you won't do that if you're in your head using logic. Logic never connected you to anyone or anything. Is that not a fact? You're correct, yes. <laughs> so if you really absorb that stuff, pay attention to how you feel, not what you think about how you feel. Perfect. Thank you. Yourself is the key. Yes, thank you, sorry. Thank you. This is, this is going to be a good stopping point. Um, can we get some high fives and big hugs for Kate in the chat? Oh. I mean, that's already been happening, but Kate, so Kate, you check it out. You've been working it, woman. You really, oh, yeah. like, you really showed up to work today. And I just, the chat has already bowed down and praise like wow like I get her <laughs> this is me I so see it now thank you Kate you're so brave there's been a lot of Kate love here 
I'm good. Because <laughs> okay. you've been helping so purpose. many people. <laughs> you've been helping a lot of people with choosing yeah. to show up and be vulnerable today. So yeah. I just want to oh. reiterate for you how powerful this is for others and appreciate you in your willingness to be visible. So thank you. Mm-hmm. Definitely when you have a minute, check your chat. Because there's a okay. lot of great love there for you. Okay. okay great. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. No, thank you, Kate. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Um, Miss Claire, my love. Can uh, how's your sound? Let's hear your sound. Yes, yeah, should be working. You're doing great. Yeah, perfect. All right. So, um, my dear Claire. This, uh, I have what you wrote. I'm going to go ahead and share that. It says that you met in 2019. Um, your brief in, uh, overview is that you guys met in 2019, but you've been in separation ever since. You're both roughly 30 years old. There's no communication at all. You're both working on core wounds around abandonment and betrayal. And when I asked, what would you like help with through the laser coaching today? You shared abandon and abandonment and betrayal. Um, for you specifically, the wounding sounds like that you uh, recognize so far is self-image, shame, disempowerment, not speaking up. Um, and there's a little bit of mirroring there from him around inauthenticity, low self-worth, shame, and self-loathing. So, um, Claire, thank you for being here with us today and being willing to allow us to create more of our own healing through your sharing. Um, Lee, what questions do you have for Claire? Hi, Claire. Hi. What kinds of mean things do you say about yourself? Oh, um, I'm not good enough. Um, what else? Other people are so much better than me. Um, you know, I talk the talk, but I don't walk the walk. Mm. Things like that. Um, it's very imposter syndrome. Like, it's not really body image. It's more how I show up in, in my life. Right. Yeah. Growing up, who did you have as your emotional support? Um, I had my mum until I was, until she died. Oh. And then I had my dad. <laughs> How old were you when she passed? I was nine. Okay. Claire, nine-year-old girl, walks in, sits down and looks up at you. And she says, I lost my mommy and I'm not good enough. What do you say to her? Um, breathe, Claire. Breathe. I would say that her mum loved her very much and she is good enough. Mm. Did you acknowledge how she feels? Feel the answer? Yes. Mm. Pay attention. Why didn't you put your arms around her and say, I'm your mommy now? Half of her is in me, and I'm going to give it to you. You are good enough. You do matter. Let's go talk to Dad. Okay. Do you see how that was not even anywhere in your radar? Yeah. So what happens is, is every time that you think you're acknowledging how she feels, you actually put her down and then disconnect, and you don't tell anybody. This usually happens very early at the age when you lose a parent, right? Because the other parents going through the loss and they're worried about you and you're worried about them. And how did you and your father communicate when this happened? Um, Just as you've just said, um, he was taking, you know, everything on board. Kind of like Kate, he was, you know, then the single parent Mm. and he was terrified of dying and thus becoming orphans. Mm. So dad was always under the constant threat of feeling like he'll abandon you guys through either loss or not being enough. Yeah. And you took, 
So you took on your dad's persona. You're in your masculine. Makes <laughs> sense now, doesn't it, Claire? <laughs> oh, and then oh. But every time you try to talk to yourself, you've lost yourself and nine-year-old you shows up and you're like, you don't have. But you do, Claire. You very much do. And everything that you felt in the loss of your mother, this is how you lose yourself to stay connected to her. You abandon yourself and lose yourself to make sense of the feelings you didn't get to express for her. Okay. Feel that. It's okay. You didn't do anything wrong. But when did anyone connect to how you feel? Do you feel your head shaking now? Would you be okay if all of us did that for you right now? Yeah. Your mom's here too. Can you feel her? She's in your chest. Open it up so she'll stop abandoning you. You didn't lose her. You're just holding on to the part of her you think you lost. That's why you keep losing yourself. But she gave you so much love. Your innocence and your vulnerability at age nine, did you disconnect from it? To be there, a stronger person for your dad, maybe? So now in your connection, you always show up strong because that's what you learn to do to someone you're connected to. And you don't know how to let them in, so you keep losing them. Is that happening? Yeah, and pretty much every man or friend or yeah. anyone, yeah. Yeah, because you'd never learned how to be vulnerable with a man because mom was gone. Dad needed you, so you abandon your vulnerability for your father. So you'll probably abandon your vulnerability for every relationship with men you ever have until now. Because now you have a vulnerable relationship with me and Charity, <laughs> everybody here. So now you can't tell yourself you can't have one because we accept your vulnerability. You're allowed to be you. See, you keep abandoning your vulnerability. You're going to stay hurt. And then you're going to stay in the loss. And you believe that's the only way you can stay connected to your mom. But what if you're wrong? What if you're wrong? What if your mommy loves you so much and she's trying to come through and be there for you, bringing you connections that will help you open up so you don't hurt? The girl inside of your hurt. How old is she? Nine, 10, 11, 12. I can keep going all the way to 30. Do you know why? That's how long you've been disconnected from her. Yeah. Why doesn't she deserve a connection to you? No, she does. And did you grow up to be the mommy and daddy that she needed at nine? Yeah. yeah. Did you do that for her? No. <laughs> There would be your abandonment then, wouldn't it? Right. That would be your betrayal. Okay. And ultimately turn into your rejection. And the closer anyone gets to you that they realize that, the more you hurt. And you don't tell them where the hurt's coming from because you're afraid you'll lose them. Yeah. Do you need to do that anymore? No. No, I spent a long time doing that, and I'm tired of it. Mm, tired. I love tired. Tired turns into angry at some point. Do you yeah. know why? Uh, do you know why tired turns into angry at some point? Is it because it all seems so pointless that you couldn't have sorted it out sooner? Mm. How about this? The girl inside of you hurt. Who's she getting fed to? when you're tired and angry. You're tired and angry, right? <laughs> That's what's chewing on her. And you're just being absent from that. And the hurt spills everywhere. And that girl inside, inside of the hurt, who gets to love her when you're doing that, being tired and angry? Yeah, no one. You're someone. Stop making her a no one. Well, she deserves love too, right? Yeah. Your, does your connection to her matter? 
Yes. Does your action support it? No. Did you notice both of those answers didn't match? Yes. How do you think that feels in her? Tired? Angry? Yeah. yeah. That's the source of it. So here's what we do, Claire. Right now, Claire lost her mom and her father. Yeah. So she struggles to trust connection because she has only had connection through loss then abandonment. See, you can see it now, right? And the girl in the head who's telling you that story, she's not paying attention to the girl in you that feels everything. Is she kind to her? Just absent, I think, not intentionally. Mm. So what does that do to the girl who feels everything? Hurt. Yeah, there you are. So do you trust the girl in your head? No. Because she gets you loved or she gets you hurt? Yeah, she gets me hurt. Oh, and you accept this? Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> this is how you put laughter inside of your hurt. It'll change the hurt. It'll give you a different acceptance of the hurt. Mostly it's going to give you the truth. Does your father know how deeply you hurt losing your mom? No. So you won't let him love you, the real you. Breathe. It's okay. You, doesn't mean you can't do that now. You can change everything right now, with or without your father. Seeing your connection to yourself right now, yeah. the girl that needed and wanted her father to love the real her, your connection to her matters more than it does to your connection to him. You feel that? What are you feeling and where do you feel it? Um, I just, I feel a bit more connected. <laughs> yeah. Shh, don't tell this thing. Don't, don't do it. <laughs> Don't, don't, don't. It, it'll wreck your day yeah. and in a matter of seconds. But the one thing it can't do is tell you how to feel anymore. Yeah. Because how you feel matters. And you need to be connected to how you feel. I spend all day telling people that. <laughs> and you don't listen to your own advice? No. Can you imagine what's going to happen when you do? Yeah. So the one thing you want and need, you give to other people, but not yourself. What does that do to your vulnerability? It just switches it off. Connection or disconnection. You can see it, the switch. Yeah. We have found that there are so many billions of stories, billions of different thought patterns all with one feeling that nobody wants to connect to because they were taught how to run from their pain. And the story you get to tell yourself about your pain is what's keeping you abandoning it. But if you just move the story out of the way and access your pain, you would access the creative birth energy we all come from and change your story. So the girl inside of your pain is your rebirth, is your connection to your mom. She was in pain when she had you. What makes you think she's still not in there? Oh, see, you smiled so you know the truth. She'll be inside of your pain, loving you. And you can create everything that changed everything. Now, or you know how to suffer. <laughs> That's always fun, isn't it? I, I practice suffering daily. <laughs> She'll tell you, I do. I, 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 I'm not great at it, but I tell you one thing's for sure. I know there's a me inside of my pain. If I'm not connected to that, she can't connect to me. You can do this, Claire. Did this help you with your abandonment? Do you see, yeah. how, you're, you see how you're abandoning yourself? Yeah. 
do you love the girl in you that does that to you? No. Okay, let's change that. What happens if you love her? How much power does she get if you love her? Oh, so much. Oh. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah, that kind of releases you from doing that kind of silly shit if you love her, huh? But if you can be against her, don't worry. She'll wreck the shit out of your connection to yourself. <laughs> and that's yeah. the fun part. You can actually see that now. Rejecting her gives her the energy. Accepting her doesn't. It grants you access back to your vulnerability, doesn't it? Yeah. Welcome home. Beautiful. Thank you. This is a great pause point. Claire. Oh my gosh, woman. <laughs> then I cried. Like at least two other people in the chat cried listening. <laughs> There's a lot of resonance here um, in your willingness to come forward and be brave and share exactly what you've been going through. Um, and your brave bravery and courage and sharing your heart with us today. So can you guys put some love in the chat for our girl, Claire here? Um, she brought us all home, man. <laughs> <laughs> we really did get to come home with you, Claire. So thank mm -hmm. you. Aww. And Lee. Oh my gosh. Yes. Thank you. That was a phenomenal, oh, Amazing. phenomenal round of coaching per usual. Um, so uh, if you guys throw some love in the chat for Claire, she'll be in to read all of your lovely comments. Mm -hmm. um, and those of you who have questions, we have a bit of time, about 10, 10 or so, 10, 15 minutes for questions. Is that enough? Uh -huh. you guys? We'll do live Q&A uh, with Lee and Sherry uh, based on what you guys would like them to answer for you. Mm -hmm. um, this, this is much less personal. You guys can't give the entire background, but uh, they will give you some prompts to assist you in finding your way back home to you. For those of you that need, um, you know, are recognizing you're like, okay, this is, this is what I've been looking for. I've been needing coaching support like this. Um, what you want to do is find your way to info at relationship reinvented.com and send them an email. They'll set up a complimentary 30 minute session for you, um, so that you can take a deep dive for yourself and then take a look at, okay, if, you know, based on this deep dive, here's where I know I have further work to do. And then they, they can work with you to set up the container in which you can do that work. And for those of you that, you know, you've been that person your whole life who, you know, people come to, to get, you know, relationship support and advice, you can really formalize that uh, as your path for light work. If you're called to through their coaching program, their coaching certification, and become a connection coach, which will allow you to work with other people in the way that you're witnessing demonstrated here. It'll give you the skills to do that. Okay, beloveds, unless anyone, if nobody has any questions, we can roll. I mean, they have grandbabies over, they're doing fun stuff with family. <laughs> well, we are doing something special this month and next month. Tell us about um, that. March 26th to the 29th, it's three nights and four days. We're taking 10 people who want to come and stay and we're going to take them into themselves in ways they didn't even know they could. And we're going to show them that their connection is real. We're going to connect how they feel and show them how to stay in that. Um, we've noticed that that has to have a lasting impact. Anybody who's ever been in our energy field there's this release of things that you never really return. So if you're really interested in doing that, you can email relationship reinvent at Gmail and put spiritual retreat home because that's what we're calling it. Um, this is gonna be a connection back to your healing, not a connection back to your hurt. We only want people who are ready to do it. Um, what that means is if you have an active mind that's still fighting you, I'd recommend what root camp. 
because your roots are not going to heal if you're still in there fighting your head or your head's fighting for you. This isn't about your protection or your safety. This is about your healing, which your vulnerability is required for that. We will be waking you up early to do things that connect you to yourself. And we're going to be making you go to bed late, <laughs> connecting things to yourself. We'll be sitting around campfires. We'll be sitting around talking about connection. We'll have one-on-one -on -one time with Lee and Sherry. And we're going to absorb some things in you and you're going to release some things and absorb some things from us. But it's gonna be deep and it's gonna be powerful and we're only gonna do it three times this year. And if it's something you're really interested in, it will only be two at a time. So if you really wanna do it, we're right here. And we'll give you the information when you reach out, but know that we're going to sit and talk to you first. So, who Tucker? <laughs> Was that Leia? Leia and Tucker? They're okay. great. So, and is it relationship reinvented at gmail.com? Yeah, that's either one relationship reinvent or reinvented at gmail.com. And that's okay. only put spiritual um, connection healing, just put that. I put spiritual retreat home. Yeah, oh that's gosh. fine. Yeah, that'll work too. Um, okay. And we're going to really. Um, we will I mean, have a what Reiki we, master here you know, doing Reiki. We'll be having some music. Um, the live music. Live There'll music be a lot of things and, that are just about connecting to yourself and things you can start doing and being in this energy field. You're going to find that you don't necessarily need time to heal. You just need connection to heal. So one thing that we've all been avoiding is the one thing you'll get out of this. And I promise you, you can't be the same coming out of it. Nice. Um, the other thing was, isn't Sherry beautiful uh -huh. today? <laughs> and yeah, <small>. yeah. glowy. <laughs> yeah. I, um, we have some questions you. rolling if you guys okay. are ready. We'll take a couple questions. Yes, Absolutely. we will. Amazing. Okay, so Salma says, my question is, my mind wants to figure out how this connection will resolve and show up in the physical. This is time mind. I see that, but I still struggle to fully surrender in the now. How can I help? And how can, can you help me in trusting? When has your mind ever connected you to anyone or anything? Now. Not in the future, not in the past. When does that ever happen? And do you consider that connection? One of the things that we do is when we go to our mind, our greatest disconnect, and we try to communicate our feelings, right? You want somebody to listen to you. That's not even the truth. That's what the mind is saying. How about you want somebody to connect to how you feel? Which one do you think you're giving a priority when it comes to your mind? Listening never connected you to how you feel. Feeling connected you to how you feel. Another person can feel you. This connection is ancient, but it's the truth. She can feel me, I can feel her, and we're not ashamed to tell people that. <laughs> when you start going, oh, I can't tell people this, you don't even see yourself rejecting the connection. And the connection's gonna reject you back. How's that not the truth? So mm. when you think the mind is doing one thing, it's definitely doing something else. And it's not connection. Thank you. Oh. All right. Next question. Uh, Dawn says, my twin is my best friend. He says he loves me, but I don't understand why he only loves me as a friend when we have such a strong connection. Sherry, I think you went through a period like this with Lee, did you not? Well, we just talked about this this afternoon too, didn't we? It's funny how things come back up multiple times a day. I've always been awake. <laughs> what say you two to this? But. Go ahead. Her word, but. Yeah. I think the way when she made all that yeah. statement about him loving her, and then she said, but, but it rejects his love, and she's not even paying attention to that space. So her mind is going to be overactivated, making sure she stays disconnected to make sense of the but. 
Um, you know, I was just talking about this. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll bring it down in human. <laughs> and uh, sometimes I got to do that. Oh, fine. hell. Um, and we, we were just talking about this in, in the friend zone. Mm. I, 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 in, in Twin Flames, there, in, in, I guess in this dynamic, people want to throw that, um, throw that around a lot. Mm. Right? Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting. I've lost where I was going. It. It, was real important. it was real important that when you say something and you put the butt in there, it kind of negates everything you had said before that. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but going through this friend zone with Lee, what, if you want to call it a day or two of friend zoning, um, I, I personally believe this is my personal opinion. It's not written in any book. It's just a personal opinion is um, that friend zone is, is insinuated. Mm. Um, I know and we know in our souls that attraction that passion that want that desire that drive that calling is there mm. and if you're in a moment and you're alone friend zone goes out the window no matter what happens lee and i were both in other relationships when we merely was in the friend zone went out to lunch or dinner um that was lunch lunch and next thing you know, we're on the couch. Adult things are happening. <laughs> I slept in town. And, um, and, and, you know, the words that came out of his mouth was, I'll never sleep with another woman again. You, you were it. That's it. And that's like. But we got to tell him why that happened. But it, right. But it you was in, I mean? that friend zone to me is so, sort of insinuated. I think, like it's a way well, to stay in with. I don't want to lose you as a friend or lose your respect. I want to, because you're my best friend. I want to be here with you. I want to be here for you. We just can't do adult things, which always goes down the toilet. It actually worked much differently the way I experienced it with her. I remember going, okay, she's with this guy that she can share everything with and be completely open with. He's allowed to know her thoughts. He's allowed to know her feelings. And I didn't even get that when I was with her. So I probably should just say, let's be friends to see if she'll open that. And that's exactly what happened. And then the connection sealed itself. Yeah. See, we create these rules inside of our mind about what we can share with the person we're connected to. We did that as children. And how far did that get you when it needed to be loved? True. So when we were sitting there and she was being completely open, my attraction to her got stronger because she was open with how she thinks. She was open with how she feels. And the next thing I knew, I mean, the furniture was moving around. It wasn't my fault. It was the connection's fault. Yeah. That's the blame, only way I can blame it. Blame the connection. You can't just open up and not expect somebody to fall in love with you when they say, be my friend. And then you feel like you can just open up everything. And that's what she did. And we haven't been disconnected since, nor with other people since. See, we didn't know that we could have that with each other because we're too busy being up here being disconnected i love that that is a beautiful explanation and very clarifying thank you <laughs> adult things were happening okay <laughs> so lily says lily butterfly says when is it important to use our mind it is given to us for a reason even our intuition is speaking via that's the vehicle it comes through the mind as well what do you think of that business creativity your mind was put in you for creativity to have a device to use for your creativity. yes mm -hmm. that, creativity that right? yeah. what can you create can you create peace can you create love can you create abundance can you what what can you create can you create a piece of work can you create a sheet of music um can you create a, a dish what is it you can create? Hmm. Beautiful. True. And, you know, <clears throat> the way Kate showed everybody earlier, what's my next thought going to be and how it just kept going blank. That's using your mind. Other than that, it's using you. Hmm. Use your mind to stop your thoughts. Yeah. Get out of time. Time is never going to give you connection. 
connection gives you connection, not time. Isn't that right, Claire? <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah. Kate, go ahead, Kate. Go. Go, Kate. <laughs> yeah, so this fight that I picked with my my counterpart, you know, and I, I probably out of ego, I said, I release you. I need to... I need I need to practice non-attachment and be in flow and work on myself. I mean, I didn't mean that, you know, now. So do I, where I'm feeling it now, I've been feeling the connection so much the past couple of weeks. Do I go back and tell him that? Do I tell him how I really feel or do I, you know, I'm, I'm still the 3D, 5D world. I'm still, that's going to look crazy <laughs> and he's going to run for the damn hills because he's confused. He's not where I am. I know I need to work on me. So Claire, we're going to give you a free session and we're going to go into that so you can see what to do. Because you already have it in. It's just going to take us a minute for us to pull it out so you can see that's exactly how you want to show up. You're just not letting yourself get it. The mind is going to do that. Yeah. So get the link. Um, Kate, and, actually, Kate and Claire. Yeah, both of you get a free session with us. I would really like to help you. I want you to heal something very deep that's going to open you up in ways you know is possible, but your thinking is making you abandon it. Yeah, I mean, when you went the way you described how the adult things happened, but before that, you know, there was this conversation. That's exactly what happened. And then, like you say, your mind just goes, that's not how you date. You can't tell people all this stuff and also you're just running away um because you expect loss in my case <laughs> yeah, yeah. and, and yeah. that's that's how you create enlightened connection to yourself when you start realizing you are not what you think you are you're yeah. everything you feel you are but it's a hard thing to do because who's teaching it who's pointing to it who's saying that's the key to connection where are you finding that anywhere yeah it's not what you think it is. Nope, thinking doesn't know what connection is. You do. Your feelings do. And once your feelings can take over, you'll know how to use your mind. Um, yeah, it's funny because I actually spoke to Kay um, about a month ago. And she said, um, ever since your mom, you, you can't think and feel at the same time. You're either thinking or you're feeling. Yeah. So going forward with this, you have to tell him that and go away and process how you feel and then come back and, ex and explain it. So eventually you'll be able to do both at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> you'll be able to communicate while you're I feeling. I'm watching Kate. Kate stays in her mind an awful lot. You stay in your mind an awful lot, don't you, Kate? Are you very, okay. you're very, uh, you're, you're very, um, you're very open-minded to a lot of things, but you're closed-minded to a lot of things when it comes to spirituality. Uh Yes and no. I, I'm very spiritual. I have yeah. I, I live, breathe, everything spirituality, but they're they're separate. I, yeah, we got it. We got to work on that. All up in here, and it it overrides my we're heart. Gonna, we're gonna work on yeah. that. We've seen and we've seen that a lot because people who practice like the twelve steps and they've been trained to do that, they have a hard time releasing that. And we'll show you exactly how to do that so you can feel greater than you've ever had. Okay. And, and I want to go around feeling, don't get me wrong, but I, oh, I, right, I, right. I can't Absolutely. go oh, shitting I people go around feeling, feeling like, all day. Feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Don't we all? We got you. I want, to, got I, want you. To, I want to walk around feeling all the day too. It's just impossible. <laughs> but but that's another thing you can use your mind for, to redirect, redirect your thoughts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, wait, well, yeah. Something feel, feel, feel. Oh, that feels great. Okay, cool. I, I just, I, I want to personally just speak to that, you know, feeling of being afraid of looking crazy, right? Piece that you mm -hmm. shared, Kate. Because <laughs> um, before, you know, I knew what I was dealing with. I thought this was just a regular old relationship with a regular old breakup process and a regular old, you know, kind of healing process. I didn't know that I was about to get 
blown wide open to love and to spirit. And so in my regular old thinking, when neither he nor I could quit it after so much dysfunction, I said to him, you know, I wrote him a long letter and I, at the end of the letter, I said, you know, I didn't deserve to be treated this way and do not contact me again. Cause I, I, in my mind knew like if, if neither one of us can grow, this is going to keep repeating. And we're just going to like, we're going to drag ourselves down to the pits of hell. Like this is going to get ugly. It's, it's already nasty. It's going to get nastier. <laughs> So I, I cut him off. I said, do not ever contact me again. And that began a six month separation between us. But within 10 days of having sent that letter, I was experiencing some of the worst pain I'd ever felt in my life. It, it superseded any type of heartbreak I'd ever had prior and knew was even possible in this lifetime. Mm-hmm. And so I circled back round after six months <laughs> and I just said to him, I said, look, you know, we, you know, I reopened the door to communication on his birthday. I wished him a happy birthday. And as you know, we started talking again and I said to him, you know, I, had a chance to think about the things that I said and really, you know, just feel into what's true for me. And what's actually true for me is I didn't like the way we were behaving together and like the way I felt treated, but I learned that I love you enough. I'd rather have you in my life than out of it. And that was, that was the the truth from my heart that I just, I preferred him in my life than out of it. So that began uh, a long friend zone period. (laughs) But inside of that period, I worked with Lee and Sherry. And in that time, I got to be with all of that stuff that compelled my heart to be connected, even when I was triggered that compelled my heart to stay present, even when I was overwhelmed and flooded with emotion. So, um, you know, but I knew, I knew because of the way he respected my line. When I said, don't contact me again, and he respected it, I was like, focus on me. I'm going to have to be the big girl here. (laughs) Like, I'm going to have to eat this, eat those words, and really own up to where my vulnerability was at, which was, okay, no, I don't like the way he treated me, but that doesn't mean run away. That means expand my heart to be with my feelings about all the things that are going on and be with what's underneath his choices. Be with that too. Be with him and his choices and be with me. Like I had to expand my capacity to do that. And my work with Lee and Sherry is what provided that for me. So um yeah uh salma says twin flame connection is such a gift it is um because it breaks us open it breaks us open and breaks down what the mind wants to do um instead of loving it all the ways all the shields all of the walls we have to love the pull in this connection forces us to confront them and tear them down so that all that is left is love. So um, on that note, beautifuls, these two are going to provide a uh, three-day, four-day retreat for you to be able to do that within yourself for yourself. And so that capacity to hold more love and let the love start to not wash out, not drown. What's the word? Melt the triggers. They're going to be able to do that with you in this three day event. And if you can't do the three day, what I highly recommend. There is also just, just to give you a heads up, there will yep. be a web 
way that they can do it as well. There's three, okay. well, there's three different ways that they can actually experience the retreat. So perfect. The 10 people in person will be ones that we actually interview and talk to and bring in. Cool. Then there'll be a Facebook group that'll be private. And then there will be a live running stream of the whole weekend. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So thank you for the gift of this um, relationship reinvent at gmail i'll be linking all the things below so that you can connect with them you can do the 30 minute um you know that's on the house to see kind yes, of, you know yes, where yes. the right place is do you want do you need to do root camp at this point is the 10 day right or the sorry the three day right for you i don't know how i got y'all leading 10 day <laughs> retreats now but <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's coming <laughs> yeah that actually that's at the end of summer and i think it's going to be in australia but we'll talk about that at a different time okay amazing <laughs> um so yeah um thank you everyone for being here uh claire and kate it was such an honor to witness the two of you coming home to loving yourself and being present with yourself i know that was they took a lot to be that vulnerable and real in front of a live audience. And we are blessing you and thanking you for that. Everyone, thank you so much. Please hit that like button and I will see